here's an example of how a climate driver can have profound effects and consequences for people living in certain parts of Australia. This diagram shows the wind patterns around the Earth together with how the air rises at the equator, moves aloft towards the two poles, then sinks down in the middle latitudes. And that's that where it sinks down, that's that middle latitude high, which plays such a significant role in the climate of the southern part of our country. Now, if you've got more energy pushing the air up around the equator, chances are it'll move further around and come back down at a much higher latitude. In other words, further south than where it's currently coming down. So if we have a look at the climate drivers chart, we will see that there's a very strong chance that the mid-latitude high in winter will be further south than it is shown on this chart, and similarly the southern is further south again. And that impacts the westerlies that are blowing in the southern ocean, but it also impacts how the fronts will swing up and bring winter rain to Perth, South Australia, Southern Victoria and South New South Wales, and of course Tasmania. We have already noted and have measurements showing that the latitude at which the mid-latitude high occurs is moving further south. And we're starting to see profound changes in the nature of the rainfall throughout the year in places like Canberra, where we live, where we're getting less rain in winter than we used to get before. So when we think about this and we have a look at the, the, the climate of these areas, the temperate parts of Australia, where so much of our population is centred, is likely to see a significant change in their winter rainfall, which impacts the agriculture. And we are likely going to have to rethink how we grow and what we grow and when we grow as our climate readjusts to the southerly movement of the mid-latitude high. We've kind of come a full circle.